Thank you. You can be seated. We are here today to celebrate the life of Trooper Tyler Edenhofer. My name is Dave Van Dong. I'm one of the pastors here at Christ Church of the Valley. To Tyler's family and loved ones, there really are no words, but we wanna share our heartfelt sadness with yours. Even though he was way too young, way too young to leave us, you should be proud of who he was and what he stood for and how he served. You know, when he enlisted in the Navy and in the Department of Public Safety, he did so knowing that he was putting his life on the line for the sake of others. In John chapter 15, verse 13, it says, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for others. There's no better expression of love in our world than a willingness to pay that ultimate sacrifice. And so in the midst of your grief, Tyler's a hero, and we pray that you can hang on to that. On that note, to those of you in the DPS and law enforcement communities, we want you to know today that <laughs> you're our heroes. You are warriors ordained by God with the authority and the responsibility to defend, to serve, and to protect our communities knowing that it could require the ultimate sacrifice of you. You are in our prayers, and we thank you for all that you do as you serve with distinguished character and distinguished honor. And to your families who are behind the scenes, who support you, who encourage you, who also sacrifice so much, we say thank you to your families. As we continue to grieve Tyler's death, and especially in light of how young he was, it's a stark reminder of how fragile life can be. In the midst of uncertainty, many unanswered questions, I believe that there's one that we can turn to in our grief. And I believe that there's reason to have hope, even in death. Revelations 21, verse three and four, talks about God's desire for us to be in heaven with him. And it gives us a small glimpse of what it could be. It says, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more, no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Father, we are here 
to say thank you for Tyler, for his life, for his service, for how he loved, for those he loved, for those he served and how he served. God, we pray that today we would honor him, his legacy that he leaves behind. God, we pray especially for his, his family, his loved ones, those who knew him best. God, I pray that you would be a source of comfort to them in the midst of their grief. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Tyler James Edenhofer was born on November 22nd, 1993 at Luke Air Force Base in Arizona. He died in the line of duty on July 25th, 2018. Tyler attended Barry H. Fairfax High School from his freshman year to his junior year in Levine Village, Arizona. For his senior year, he attended Jefferson Town High School in Jefferson Town, Kentucky, where he graduated in 2012. After high school, Tyler enlisted in the Navy where he became a welder. For most of the four years Tyler was in the Navy, he was stationed in Guam, where he would meet his fiance, Kaylee Seaving, who also just so happened to be his boss. After completing his enlistment in the Navy, Tyler immediately joined the DPS as a, as a state trooper. You know, being a part of the DPS was a dream come true for Tyler as he was drawn to it because of the brotherhood and the camaraderie that exists in it. And, and maybe just a little need to go fast. In fact, one of his best moments in his all too short career was his very first high speed chase that he got to be involved with. Even in his short time with the Department of Public Safety, Tyler embodied its purpose. Today we have several individuals who are gonna speak to Tyler's service and to his life. First up to speak on behalf of his public service will be Governor Doug Ducey, followed by Colonel Frank Milstead, the Arizona DPS Director. Today, we are blessed to celebrate the life of an amazing young man, a Navy veteran, a son, a fiance, a warrior, and brother, who was a selfless example to all of us as he laid down his life for people he had never even met. For that, we owe Trooper Tyler Edenhofer an eternal debt of gratitude. Tyler's passing has left a deep void in the lives of those who had the privilege to know him. And broken hearts in countless others who did not. Today, as Arizona grieves with all of you, his family, his friends, his brothers and sisters who wear the badge, we also celebrate a hero whose life on earth was short, but whose impact is everlasting. In May of this year, I had the honor of welcoming Trooper Class 508 to a life of service on the front lines, Tyler among them. But for Tyler, graduation from the academy wasn't the beginning of a life in service to others. It was only the latest demonstration of his noble desire to defend his community and his country. I didn't know Tyler personally, as many of you did. But in hearing of his life through his mom, Deborah, his talents, his care for others, Words fail to express how proud I am to know that such a brave and accomplished man like Tyler was willing to give his life for all of us. That's why I will always consider it an honor that upon 
graduating from the academy, Tyler Edenhofer shook my hand. I'm also humbled by the opportunity to be here today surrounded by so many incredible women and men like Tyler who have chosen a life of service in law enforcement. As we honor Tyler's memory, the hearts of all Arizonans overflow with respect, thankfulness, gratitude, and love for each and every one of you. Like every man and woman in law enforcement, Tyler knew the risks that came with putting on the badge. But if you ask his mom, she'll tell you, her son couldn't have been more proud to don the silver tan uniform and seven point gold star of an Arizona state trooper. That's the kind of man Tyler was, someone who considered it a privilege and a point of pride to serve others. To Trooper Edenhofer's family, no words can express our gratitude and thankfulness for the sacrifice Tyler and you have made. I want you to know that you will remain in the hearts, minds, and prayers of the people of Arizona now and forever. And if you're ever tempted to feel alone, I want you to remember the love that Arizona has for you. I want you to think of this past Monday night. As a monsoon storm approached, hundreds of people gathered to pay their respects to Tyler. As the wind picked up, and the dust mingled with the tears in the eyes of total strangers, not one of them broke their focus. Not one of them left or ran for shelter. It seemed as if even the weather itself was determined to pay its respect. And as the vigil concluded, the desert wept for one of Arizona's finest. That's a tribute fitting of the true hero that Tyler was to all of us. Today we give thanks to God for the 24 years he blessed us with Tyler. And we pray that he will grant healing for hearts that have been broken, restoration for lives that have been shattered, comfort where there is grief and joy where there is sadness because we know that Tyler is forever resting in his almighty arms. May God bless Tyler's family and friends, and may he protect and preserve those who selflessly serve our state and nation every day. Godspeed, Trooper Edenhofer. Governor Ducey, thank you. Police chiefs, sheriffs, elected officials, thank you for being here. Good morning. Debbie, Keith, Kaylee. First, please know that our hearts are with you. Debbie and Kaylee, the words that you spoke to me on Friday morning will forever resonate. There are few events that unite an occupation, galvanize a community or rally a state. The murder of an Arizona state trooper is one of those events. We are sad, we are stunned, we are perplexed by events unfolded. The nonsensical actions of one individual has caused so much loss, so much pain and doubt. There is no higher calling than to serve one's community. And Tyler served both his country and the state of Arizona at the highest level. We are here to remember a man who had a calling to serve, 
a man who believed in service above self, a man who believed there were better days ahead and those days would be better through his service. Tyler was a true apostle of peace, a soft-spoken man who wanted to protect others, especially those who could not protect themselves. He believed his efforts would provide a better life for those who followed. I cannot claim to have known Tyler well, so the words I speak are from those he worked with, laughed with, and served with. I do know he had a dream, a dream of becoming an Arizona State Trooper. That dream was answered when he applied at the Arizona Department of Public Safety. At graduation, when Governor Ducey and I stood with him on stage and handed him his badge and snapped a quick picture, he stood tall, shoulders back. It was the proudest moment of his young, blossoming life. Talking with his grandmother, he was not always the best student but not for the reasons one might expect. He was frustrated by those who didn't take things seriously and just wanted to play and take shortcuts. Tyler was able to earn the respect of his classmates and senior troopers in the short time he was here. It was through his conduct. It was how he spoke to people with respect, empathy, and reverence. Tyler will be remembered with the highest regard. F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote, show me a hero and I will write you a tragedy. This tragedy has a known ending and without question, Tyler is a hero in it. After being mortally wounded, he stayed in the fight, helping his brothers in tan until his body gave out. He lived a life that allowed him to wear a seven-point star and a silver tan uniform of an Arizona state trooper. Andrew Bernstein is credited with the following quote, nothing is given to man on earth, struggle is built into the nature of life, and conflict is possible. The hero is the man who lets no obstacle prevent him from pursuing the values he has chosen. Tyler lived that life. I spoke earlier in this week about what Heston and I were able to do when we arrived at the Arizona Department of Public Safety some three and a half years ago. We saw an opportunity in training. We saw an opportunity to build a state trooper academy within the Phoenix Regional Academy. It is a 28 week long academy that prepares state troopers who we deploy to all corners of the state of Arizona to become that resident expert when they show up. It's one that is different than any other one in the state. Troopers meet a unique mission. This was the first all trooper academy since 1979, and that was class 500 of last year. The next was class 508. Tyler was a member of class 508. Class 508, please stand. I know many of you stand here with heavy heart. I know you asked the question, should you go on? So let me start by thanking you for living a life that allowed you to become an Arizona State Trooper. I thank you for the bravery and commitment to serve the citizens of Arizona in is what some of the most difficult times. Let me assure you that this is not the way it is supposed to start. I have been in law enforcement for nearly 34 years and I cannot recall it ever starting this way. I call upon you to exceed all standards, to never forget Tyler, to work with great tenacity, intensity, and a sense of urgency to honor his life. 
work with great conviction to provide a positive impact on the profession of policing and the reputation of this venerable organization. Please remain standing. Will all state troopers please stand? Debbie, Keith, Kaylee, please stand and look behind you. These are the men and women that are forever part of your family. We will be here when you need us and when you don't. These men and women are your support system. Tyler's memory will live on with this agency and will be forever memorialized. Thank you to all of you who donned the seven point star for your bravery and commitment to duty. Please be seated. It is so incredibly frustrating that on the surface, to see someone like Tyler who had all the makings to be a great cop, a trooper if you will, an excellence that wasn't given a chance to be fully realized while he was here on earth, to have faith or understanding that we all have a given time here, one that may be predetermined at a spiritual level one that is unknown to us as earthly beings, but decided as we fulfill our purpose here on earth. But to know that you have influence after you've reached your heavenly destination. I am incredibly honored to have been Tyler's colonel, and I too grieve his loss. We will press on. Thank you, Governor Ducey and Colonel Milstead. Next up, we have several people that are gonna speak to Tyler's life and, and who he was. First up will be his mother, Deborah Edenhofer, accompanied by his fiance, Kaylee, then his cousin, Thomas Lilly, troopers Samuel Ansbach and Hawkins Mann, and then finished by Joellen Simons, Tyler's stepmother. First of all, I wanna say thank you to everybody for coming today and honoring my son, for the support I've had. I have a whole new family. My son is my hero, my warrior, my sheepdog, trooper. Too many words can describe him. He was so, so proud to put that uniform on every day. July 25th, he was taken away from me by such a selfless act. As you all know me, I constantly say he is my whole life. I did everything, everything for him. He did everything for me. And now I'm broken. I've had great support from my family and friends and my new trooper family that will be ever for with me forever. Especially Sergeant Hansen, thank you. My first thought was, DPS, you guys just got him. He had so much to do. He was just taken away too soon. To my son, I love you so much, infinity, forever and ever. So proud of him 
It'll be in my heart forever. The world just lost one great guy, and he will be missed dearly. May justice be served. Good morning. I want to start off by saying on behalf of my entire family, we appreciate each and every single one of you coming out and supporting us during this tragic time. We've all heard the familiar words that bad things happen to good people. Well, unfortunately, that's because it's true. this tragedy, you see the evil, and the, you see how evil and how cruel this world can be, filled with violence and hatred. But also with this tragedy, you see the good in people, you see the good in the world. You see the light through the darkness. The thousands of thoughtful messages from complete strangers. The endless kind words and the countless prayers. Tyler was taken from us way too early. He had his entire life to live an amazing career ahead of him, and a beautiful fiance to marry and start a family with. You don't realize how fragile life is until something like this can happen. You don't realize how easy it is to take a life, or how easy it is for lives to be shattered But if you knew Tyler, he was never one who liked the attention. He didn't want the spotlight on him. If he were here, he would want us to be strong for each other. He would want us to acknowledge his incredible accomplishments through his short life. Laugh at all the memories the crazy family barbecues, the get-togethers, the holidays. Together we will carry on. We will carry on his legacy and live our lives to the best of our abilities. Tyler was the type of person that we all want to be. He was humble, he was kind, caring, funny, he was respectful, and my God, was he good looking. I've had a lot of great conversations with him, especially the one on May 26, which was the last night I got to see my cousin. We talked about life and our futures. One thing we talked about is no matter where we were in our lives, no matter how busy we were, Whenever we got together, we just picked up where we left off. 
We had a special bond, a bond that can never be broken. I'm so glad I got to see my cousin that day. I got to laugh and joke. It's days like that I will cherish forever. Tyler was a welder, a Navy veteran, an Arizona State Trooper, and a warrior. He was a friend, a brother, a cousin, an uncle, a nephew, a son, and a soon-to-be husband. I love you and I miss you. Keep looking down on us, buddy, because we need it. Thank you. I first met Tyler last year during pre-academy and his fate had it. I was sitting right next to him during our first class meeting. After being told we needed to find other people to carpool with to the police academy, I learned Tyler lived fairly close to me. I didn't realize at that moment, but I had found a friend that I will never forget. Tyler mentioned to me his car might be a tight fit with all of our uniforms and gear, so I asked Tyler what kind of car he had. Coincidentally, he tur it turned out we both owned white Ford Mustangs. Tyler thought this was the coolest, funniest thing. In fact, Tyler told me this was his third Mustang. I guess he beat me by one because mine was only my second. I vividly remember the smile on his mother Debbie's face every time I brought Tyler home from the academy. The smile was ear to ear, and you could tell how proud she was of her son. And I also remember every time I picked Tyler up, sometimes as early as four in the morning, his fiance Kaylee would walk him out of the house to my car every single morning. Now that's love. On a lighter note, I remember Tyler telling me after we decided to carpool together, if I'm running more than five minutes late, he was going to leave without me. From the start, this showed me how serious Tyler was taking this career. During the academy, we were told whoever wanted to use the gym could come in early to work out. Tyler was the first to raise his hand and take advantage of that. I'm not going to lie, there were some days I did not want to wake up at three in the morning and work out, but Tyler pushed me to go anyway, and for that I am grateful. I will always be in, tet to ty in debt to Tyler for helping me get through the academy. Even after long and stressful days at the academy, Tyler took the time to teach me how to get my boots to shine as bright as his. I also remember the nights before tests at the academy. Tyler and I would help each other study by randomly sending text messages to each other without, with questions from the lesson plan to make sure we would pass each test. Even though Tyler did exceptionally well in the classroom, he saw that I and others needed help, so he attended our study groups and every Saturday for several hours each time. During our first set of scenarios in the academy, also known as field problems, Tyler struggled during three of the six scenarios. He was very upset and hard on himself. To nobody's surprise, and certainly not to my surprise, he aced the next set of scenarios. I will always cherish the times I got to spend with Tyler. We became close, so close that he started to mimic movie lines that he would hear me say over and over. Our favorite was from a movie called Billy Madison and I can still hear his voice repeating that movie line today. Both during and after the academy, Tyler and I would spend countless hours playing Call of Duty and Fortnite online. I will miss those times a lot. Mostly though, I'm going to miss the opportunity of getting to see him and the trooper we knew he was going to become. 
We all know he was destined to become one of the finest troopers this department has seen. Tyler and I always talked about working on the same squad one day, and even though this may not happen on planet Earth, I am hopeful this can happen in DPS heaven one day. Maybe we'll even be in a white DPS Mustang. I want Tyler to be remembered as a person who wanted to be a trooper for all the right reasons. Tyler was selfless, caring, and a funny dude. His integrity shined for all to see. Tyler was not in this career for the money or the power. He enjoyed helping people, and this was a perfect career to do so. I learned from this, and I will carry on his love for this career every single time I put the uniform on and try to help others. Until we meet again, brother. Tyler was a man of few words. While paying my respects to him, I will do the same and keep this short and sweet. While going through the rigorous and intensive training of the police academy, there was a common theme to all of it, and that was to make it home every night. I know for a fact this was explained to the family members of Class 508 during Family Day. However, the statement of go home every night was part one of a two-part statement. The statement in full read more like this. You make it home every night, but there may become but there may come a time when you do everything right and making it home isn't going to happen. Tyler did everything right. Tyler met all of his challenges head on. No matter the circumstances, Tyler never winced nor cried aloud. He simply gritted his teeth and got to work. Tyler was compassionate, fair, and tough. He embodied all the qualities that you would expect of a state trooper. To Tyler's family, no words can be said to replace the void that losing Tyler has left. I do want to say though, whatever your role in Tyler's life was, you shaped him to become who he was and who he was should make you all extremely proud. To Kaylee, I want you to know that you made Tyler so happy. For someone who was so soft-spoken, he wouldn't stop talking about you. He would immediately gleam when speaking of you. He adored you, he cherished you, and he loved you. To Tyler, you were taken from us too soon. I can still hear your voice whenever I think of you, and I can hear your laughter and still picture the expression on your face just as you began to laugh. I will miss the in inside jokes. Most importantly, I will miss the times we that we were supposed to have. We were set to celebrate getting off field training on the same day. You were going to teach me a motorcycle ride, how to ride a motorcycle. We were supposed to be going to the river tomorrow, but instead I am here reading this. I will forever cherish times we spent together and the laughs that we had. We will always think of you, you will never be forgotten. I know you're watching over us now and I will see you in another life. I love you. My name's Joellen Simons. I was Tyler's stepmother, hopefully without the reputation. Um, I was also known as mom number two by Debbie and Tyler. Thank you for that. It always warmed my heart. This is um, Alex, his sister, and Will, his brother. We have a poem that we wanted to share with you all. It's called A Hero's Welcome by Robert Longley. Time to come home, my dear son. Your tour of duty through, you've given us as much as anyone could be expected to ever do. Just a few steps further, the smoke will start to clear. Others here will guide you. You have no need to fear. You have not failed your brothers. You clearly gave it all. And through your selfless actions, others will hear the call. So take your place of honor among those who have gone before. And know you will be remembered for now and evermore. Keith, Debbie, thank you for sharing your beautiful son with me. 
He changed my life forever. so much your light your smile your way and everything about us though you're gone you're still here in my heart in my tears yeah you so left your mark and we were just getting started
I'll say you die tonight Just so I can get to you For the sun will rise I know the sun's are hard I feel this too None of that ever seems to matter When I'm holding you And I am wasting away Sing away, away from you. your breath away and I am wasting away away from you and I am wasting away away from you what have I got Never trust anyone again, but I 
I see you in all the pieces in my life Though you were mine, you were my first love I wanted to go away with you troubles here I wanted to run away with you and I will bring all my dreams and fears
As we continue to, to grieve Tyler's death, uh, Thomas, you really, you really said it well. This tragedy is a, a stark reminder that life uh, is often not how it should be. It's a reminder that our world is broken. In fact, that very fact is the reason that we need law enforcement, why we need so many of you. And it's why many of you chose this career. You chose this career because you wanted to intercede into the brokenness of this world and make it safer, make it better. And I think all of us also understand that it often doesn't take something as devastating as this to know that that life isn't as it should be. That realization comes through all of the frustrations that we face day in and day out, whether big or small. All of us here, we come from many different backgrounds. We're raised in a lot of different ways. We have all kinds of thoughts and beliefs and questions about life, about death, about life after death. And with all of those questions, the one thing that unites us is that at some point, we all face our own mortality. And as we do, I believe, I believe that there's reason to have hope even in death. You know, life is, we know it sometimes, especially in the brokenness. It's really not as God wants it to be for us. It's not how he created it to be. Did you know that? He has a life planned for us that's so much better. And there are moments where that light does shine through the darkness in this world, but a lot of that life that God has planned for us, I believe will be experienced after this life and the life that's next. And, and I think it's hard to wrap our minds about what heaven will be, but for a moment, just think about your thoughts your dreams, your ideas of what life should be, of how you'd like life to be. We all have those inner notions. We all have those inner ideas and thoughts. And I actually believe that God is the one who puts those notion and ideas in our hearts to give us something to hope for, something only he can give us. As I read at the beginning of service, God wants us to be in heaven with him where life will be better than we could ever dream possible And he wants that for us because he loves us, because he loves you. In fact, I believe if you took the entire message of the Bible from the very first verse to the very last verse, and you could reduce it all to one message, to one word, that message would be God's love for you. John 3, 16 and 17 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God loves you. And the proof that God loves us lies in the fact that Jesus willingly went to the cross for us and then was raised from the dead so that we too could follow. We too could have a life after this life. Jesus said in John 11, 25 and 26, I'm the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. When it comes to death, our mortality, it can be so easy to only see a hopeless end, yet I believe with Jesus you can know endless hope. Again, to the DPS and law enforcement communities, on behalf of the civilian community, you know, thank you, it, it, it doesn't seem good enough for what you do for us, for the lives you live, for the careers that you've chosen, the links you're willing to go to in order to protect us. And I also just wanna say thank you for honoring Tyler's life so well. Again, to Tyler's family and loved ones, we'll certainly continue praying for you. We know this journey of grief is gonna continue. Our prayers will continue, but we just want to say thank you for sharing him with us. And we're so sorry that he's been taken from you. He will always remain a hero. Let's pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for hope. Thank you for love. Thank you for the example that Tyler set of love and what love looks like in our world, one who's willing to lay down his life for another.
God, thank you for uh, the life that you've made possible for us in heaven with you through Christ. God, we continue just to, to, to bring Tyler's family, his loved ones before you. God, I pray that in those hard moments, God, that you would surround them with your people who would love them, encourage them, cry with them, and laugh with them. God, I pray that you would grant your peace and your power in those difficult moments. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're gonna conclude this service in celebration of Tyler's life outside uh, with the honors retiring of the colors ceremony. And we're gonna dismiss the family first. We ask that everyone else just remain seated for a few moments. And once the family leaves, I will uh, dismiss the rest of you. Thank you. At, at this point, if all uniformed personnel and dignitaries, you can go ahead and exit and take your positions out on our lawn for the honor ceremony. Civilians, if you could just remain where you're at until all uniformed personnel are out of the auditorium. 